So let's dive into creating a virtual microphone source so that your Ecamm program can hear and listen and transfer audio and vice versa from one program to another. In this example, we will be using Zoom. You will need the program called Loopback. There's a link down in the description for this particular post where you can get access for that. So here we are over in Loopback and you'll see that I already have the active panels available that you will actually need and you will mimic and create something that looks and operates just like this. And what you'll notice is that you still will have audio sliders if you need to adjust things. Typically leaving these at 100% would be fine. We're gonna be creating two virtual microphones. We're going to be using the one that Ecamm will use and read and we'll name that Ecamm mic to use and then we'll be creating a second microphone that's called the Zoom mic to use so that when we're in Zoom, we know to specifically pick this one. If you come over here, you'll pay attention to exactly how this set up. You'll recreate this exactly. You'll have your main audio source here. For me, that's going to be the Rodecaster Pro. And then you will select the Zoom US or at least for me, it's in the US, but the Zoom program or whatever third party program you're specifically wanting to use. Then when we have our Zoom mic to use, we'll have our Ecamm live program that's specifically listed here that we'll select within our sources. And then we also still have the Rodecaster Pro that's being selected here. The reason why we have it set up this way is so that we know that my main microphone source here and the program I'm wanting to use here are specifically connected within the Ecamm software. And when we come over here to the Zoom microphone to use that my Ecamm software and my microphone are connected. If you come down here to where it says new virtual device, hit click on the plus symbol. By doing this, it will select a new source that'll call itself loopback audio. We'll go ahead and call this one Ecamm mic to use. We we'll use the number two instead of the word two, just so we can differentiate between the previous one and the current one. And we notice that it has pass through audio and channels selected. This is not what we need. So what we want to do is select this pass through source and click delete. Next, we'll come up here to our source and we specifically want to pick my main microphone source. Please make sure you're selecting your main microphone source as well. And for me, that's gonna be the Rodecaster Pro Stereo. Once I have this specifically selected, I wanna make sure I click down into this options just to make sure this is fully at 100% and that both of the audio meters are moving. To do this, make sure you're unmuted in your microphone source and that it's already selected and that your microphone is actually working within your computer. Next, we'll pick the source that we want Ecamm to hear, which would be, in our case, Zoom. If you don't see the program that you're looking for, just go through and select application and you'll be able to find that on your computer. And if it's not installed, make sure it's installed. For us, we just need to come down to the zoom.us and click on it. And this option automatically becomes connected. You won't need to do anything with the output channels that will already be selected here. Before we move on, Make sure you click on this little kernel here so that you open up the panel specifically here and you want to make sure that the mute when capturing is unchecked. And now you'll notice between our new Ecamm mic with the number two use and the Ecamm mic to use, which is our original source, matches up exactly. So we know we've set this up correct. The next one that we wanna create is the Zoom microphone that we'll select for our virtual microphone source. Come down here to the new virtual device. You'll see that this also creates a loopback audio channel similar to before, and we'll rename this one as well. And similar to before, to go ahead and select the pass through, and we wanna come down here to delete. Now that we have our Zoom microphone source, we need Zoom to specifically speak to Ecamm. So now we wanna click on the plus symbol and make sure we select our microphone source so we know that this is going to be heard. We'll select this drop down kernel just to make sure the audio is all the way up. Next, we want to pick our Ecamm source specifically from the program. So we'll select Ecamm Live. And now we have Ecamm Live and our Rodecaster Pro audio selected as well. However, we want to come down here and select this kernel and make sure that mute when capturing is unchecked and our audio is at 100%. Now, when the audio levels are moving, we'll notice that the Ecamm is not moving the audio channels. 
if we come down here to our zoom mic to use our original source, just to make sure we're checking our work, you'll notice that the same thing. So this lets you know you did set this up correctly. Nothing is broken. Remember our audio sources that we're going to select is Ecamm mic to use with the number two and the zoom mic to use with the number two. Once you've created these virtual microphone sources within loopback, you can go ahead and hit the red X button. And now let's open zoom. We now have a setup that will allow you to see the audio sources within Ecamm as well as see the audio sources within zoom. We'll keep the camera turned off in zoom just so it's not distracting. If we come down here to the upward facing kernel for the audio, we'll be able to see if we turn on our audio source or not. So we'll leave it off for the moment, but we want to go ahead and select the upward arrow and just pick our microphone sources. There's quite a bit that's selected here just because of the various tools and systems that I have available. You may not see as many and that's okay. The first category up here is going to be select your microphone. So that's going to be your speaking source. And we'll see, we're looking for that number two, which is the zoom mic to use. So that way, when we're in zoom, we know to specifically select this microphone. And then we want to make sure we select that icon again so that our speaker source, you can still use whatever it is that you're using for your export for the audio, meaning your headphones are connected to your computer or your headphones may be connected to your Rodecaster Pro. So when it comes to the headphone sources, I don't need to change anything and there's no need for a virtual microphone or virtual headphones. If that's a thing, we just really need to keep it as our regular source. So that won't mess anything up and we can still hear everything normally. And that's all that we would need to pick here. In our Ecamm audio source, we would need to go here and I don't want to select my regular Rodecaster Pro. I do want to enable my virtual uh, microphone. So what I'll do is select on that icon and it will bring up still all of the microphone options I have available. And I'm specifically wanting to pick the Ecamm microphone to use with the number two. And if we look through our audio sources, we'll see that we'll need to close out of this program first before we can use it. Cause the only one that's currently available is the one with the word T O two instead of the number two. So that's why I wanted to show you the different designations, because if you already have Ecamm open, when you're setting this up, you need to close the program and then reopen it. So if you're doing this before a live stream or a show, you will want to make sure that you have time to do this, set this up and verify everything is operating correctly. You will need to have loopback running. So you can hit the red X to close the program. It's on the surface level and it's still running in the background, but that way you're able to see those specific audio sources. So now we have restarted Ecamm and you do not need to keep loopback running. You can go ahead and completely close out the program once it's successfully set up, but you will need to go ahead and select your Ecamm microphone to use as your specific source. So we'll go ahead and share the screen so you can see all the above. What we want to do is make sure that we are unmuted so that we can test and make sure that this is working. But there's no way when I select this from the Rodecaster Pro, this is our Ecamm audio. We'll need to select this to the Ecamm microphone to use. So we know which one specifically to use. But if you notice, as I'm talking, the audio meters are moving here and the audio meters are moving here. There's no way to definitively know if this is working just yet. One way that you can test this is by going here. If you have some of the music that we did earlier in the course, let's go ahead and expand this here. So this is only audio that is coming from with Ecamm, not the Rodecaster Pro or anywhere else. So that we know that audio from Ecamm can be heard within the Zoom program. We'll go ahead and select our audio settings here and bring up this box. And so that that same meter that's moving, that's showing that the zoom mic to use is showing not just for when I'm speaking, but when the music is playing as well. And we'll be able to see this in just a moment. So now we've been able to successfully test that not only my audio when I'm speaking is correct, but also that audio coming from within Ecamm only can be heard within zoom. So when you go to zoom, you select the zoom microphone that is to be used. And when you're within Ecamm, you select the Ecamm microphone that is to be used. Now, when you don't need to use any of these sources, you can always go back to here would be with Rodecaster Pro for me. And then within my specific zoom settings can be just the Rodecaster Pro stereo auto there. And that's everything that I would need. I wouldn't necessarily have to use the virtual microphones unless I really want to. And it makes it very easy to remember of what to pick when I'm selecting in zoom, pick the zoom microphone to use and within Ecamm, pick the Ecamm microphone to use. 
Now that you have your virtual microphone sources and you've learned about your virtual camera sources and how to set those up, let's go ahead and decide when to actually share things and when not to, when leveraging Ecamm's preview mode that gives you way more creative flexibility than just figuring out things on the fly.